Hey, Evangelia. Thanks for joining me. Welcome to the hey, show. Thanks. thanks so much for having me, Tony. Really happy to Definitely. be here. Definitely. No problem. Thank you. How, how are you? I'm good. It's a beautiful morning in LA, so I can't complain. How are Very you? Nice. I'm uh, doing well. I mean, it may look like I'm on the Greek islands <laughs> right now, but uh, I'm not. Unfortunately, I just got back to Boston. Uh, it's It's beautiful out but visually only it's actually pretty cold when i walked outside so yeah we're dealing it's okay. with that. milos looks lovely we all know that <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 uh anyways yeah let's jump right into this um why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself before we get started so tell our listeners so i am a my name is evangelia i'm a greek american singer songwriter and i grew up in, I was born in New Jersey, but a month later, my parents took me to Kriti, where my father's from, to meet my family. And I basically have lived my whole life um, back and forth between New Jersey and Kriti. And um, in Kriti, I would live with my yaya, my grandmother, Evangelia, who I was also named after, and just lived a whole other life. I'm sure a lot of Greek Americans can relate to that. I was very, very fortunate that I have spent a lot of time in Greece as well. Um, so I just feel, I've always felt like a part of two places equally in a way. Awesome. Um, is being an artist, a singer, a music writer, is, something, is that something you always dreamt of? Yes, I have definitely always thought about it and dreamt about it. My friends and I used to play American Idol and like take turns with who would be the judge and everything. And I would dream. Um, but, you know, I also am, am the daughter of a traditional Greek immigrant father from Kriti who came to the United States to make something of himself, and he did. And he told me, Evangelia, music is beautiful, but it should stay a hobby. Keep it in your life, but get a real job, <laughs> you know. And uh, my mom is Italian-American, um, born and raised in the U.S. So she was, they, they were not always completely aligned. She also wanted to me to have, you know, go down like a path and, and have a secure job and lifestyle. But she was also always more like, follow your dreams, honey, if that's what you want to do. My dad was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that, do it on the side. Yeah. Anyway, so I went to, uh, I ended up going to Rutgers and I have my master's in elementary special ed and I was a teacher for three years. But then at the end of my third year, I was laid off because there were budget cuts in my district and I was not tenured yet. And I just kind of saw that as a sign from the universe to go for it. And I told Love my that. Baba, I was like, Baba, miazoyejo. I'm going to try this. Like I only have one life. And I'm just going to go for it. And at that point, he saw that my hobby that I was doing after school was becoming more and more real. He started coming to shows. And uh, then that's basically when I started really trying to figure out who I was musically. Mm -hmm. And I realized that blending my cultural Greek roots with my essentially like American upbringing with pop music and things that are on the radio is what felt the most true to me. Was there specific type of songs that inspired you? Yes. So I basically, so my father was also the president of the Pan Cretan Association of America for a year. And before that, he was yeah. the cultural chairperson of the organization. Yeah. So I just grew up around so much love for our Greek heritage and Cretan culture in particular where he would bring over all sorts of different cultural events from musicians to plays to all types of concerts. And so hearing Lira and Buzuki and going to these types of events was so normal to me. And I really loved all that kind of music. I grew up Greek dancing as well, that um, it wasn't even always necessarily one type in particular because I was so immersed in all types of sure. traditional Greek music in a sense. So yeah, but I, I love it all. Aside from music, what about people? Who are some of your big inspirations to make this happen? Yeah, well, to make this happen, um, one of my biggest inspirations in my own life is my boyfriend, um, Jay Stolar. He's a songwriter and producer. I met him two months after I was laid off 
and it was it all happened randomly and we just immediately clicked and for the first six months of our relationship we said no we are not going to work together this is not a good idea it can make or break us six months in it was impossible we were already writing music and we're like you know what let's do this and now we do all of our all of my music we do together he actually learned how to play the buzuki and he Amazing. plays all the buzuki parts in my song so now we have two we brought home two from greece um so yeah and he just pushes me to be the best i can be so as far as in my own life that really is who inspires me um the most and encourages me to be the most myself that's awesome that's that's beautiful um all right let's jump to some of the big news that we heard recently uh we heard some uh chatter about eurovision tell me about this yes indeed so when i first started releasing music in which in like May 2020, I released my first song with Sony, which was my first debut as this like Greek mixed with pop music. I truly did not have Eurovision in mind. I didn't really consider it or think of me to doing it. However, as soon as I released all this music, I just got an influx of comments and DMs and messages, even emails of like, Oh my gosh, this is for Eurovision. Do Eurovision. Evangelia, do Eurovision. Who wants Evangelia to do Eurovision? I'm tagged in all these polls. And mm -hmm. with each new song that came out, it was just Twitter was like, Evangelia should do Eurovision. Even people not from Greece who are really into Eurovision were like, Greece should send this girl. And so the people definitely put Eurovision on my mind. Um, and the more I thought about it, the more convinced I was that it could actually be really incredible Definitely. and everybody just had kind of came together with the same idea from literally the people to then me and my label we all were in a meeting and it just kind of came up naturally I don't even know who brought it up first but we were mm -hmm. it was just like Eurovision 2022 and we were all like let's give it a shot let's do it why not yeah let's so, do it so uh, right, so, <laughs> so perfect so it'll take me through this process now you submit music to I'm sure there's a board that oversees all the music. They pick yeah. you. Then you might you do you have to create a song that's for Eurovision, and then you got to get build the audience to support you. Is that somewhat along the lines? So, of you break it down a little better. Close, yeah. I have I have an understanding of it. Um, for what happens beyond, I'm not the most certain still. But how it works with submitting is you make a proposal to edit whatever the organization is with your either like one to three songs that you propose to be the Eurovision song. So you essentially are like, this is the song that I will do on Eurovision. And then they consider those songs. So you don't write okay. one after for it. Okay. Um, so you're submitting a song that you would play. It's not like they want to hear what you sound like already first. Right. Yeah. Got it. If they want to okay. hear what I sound like already. They'll just go online. Right. And, uh, right. So yeah, the way, the way I've thought about my submission is if I go to Eurovision, if I'm lucky enough, fingers crossed, I want to go and be on that stage as Evangelia and like be my true artist self. Mm -hmm. um, so the songs that I've submitted were not written specifically for Eurovision or with Eurovision in mind. They were written for my album and for future singles. Um, so as not to put any pressure and for the songs to be true and honest. Mm -hmm. And they've all come from me and from my heart. I've co-written every single one with either Jay or close friends of ours. Mm -hmm. And they all have, a, you know, a little bit of Greek flavor, whether it's some Greek language or Buzuki or even one of them has Kribikirida. So we'll see what happens. When do they get back to you? So now we're just waiting and supposedly we'll find out sometime in November. November. Okay. So we'll see. <laughs> and your vision is yearly. It's not every two years, right? So it would happen in the spring. Yeah. It's, it's May 2022 in uh, Torino, in Turin, Italy. Yeah. Because the winner yeah. gets to host the following year, correct? Yes, exactly. So the Italians won. And that's something that also excites me very much. Mm -hmm about this year that it's in Italy because yeah. my mom is Italian American. So I'm a quarter Italian and I don't speak fluent the way I speak. Like Greek was my first language along with, alongside with English. 
um, Italian. I didn't grow up with in, in our household, but I did start learning it in uh, middle school and studied abroad there. So I'm just like, what a perfect opportunity to yeah. use the Italian that I learned to go to Eurovision representing like Greece or Cyprus. Oh my God, it would be that'd such be, a dream. No, that'd be incredible. That's awesome. <laughs> well, fingers crossed. Um, yeah. I know there's no like rooting at this point right now. It's just hoping that they pick your envelope. So yeah, it's all, hope, it's all in, in their, their hands. hands. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but is it just Greece or did I hear that there's also a chance you may have submitted for Cyprus? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So, so there's, there's a shot. There's a shot. There's, there's a, a shot. Twice as uh, the two, two, you got two chances. Yeah, there's two chances. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Awesome. You know. Well, hoping to see some good news soon. Yeah. Uh, so you told me you're from Crete. Um, yeah. Where I want to talk a little bit of Greece because obviously a lot of these listeners they want to hear about uh, Greek stuff as well. And of Greece, course. I want some of your favorites. So aside from Crete, because we know you're going to tell me that every part of Crete is the best part of the planet. Um, yeah, just like every other Cretan tells me. <laughs> <laughs> but where else in Greece do you like to visit, explore, vacation? So up until recently, honestly, up until my yaya passed away um, a couple years ago, I only went to Crete. Like people were like, what other parts of Greece do you like? I'm like, I don't know. I've been to Athens a couple times. Like, but because I always felt guilty going anywhere else. So it's like, sure. I have to go be with my yaya. And I'm going to plug this in really quick. If you do want to see what Kriti looks like, I did shoot my first music video, Bame Bame, at my farmhouse and in the town of Pallohora, which is beautiful. I'm being a true Cretan right now, plugging Kriti Perfect. first, even though it wasn't in the question. Um, For those listening, yes. we'll put the link in the bio of this. Yes, podcast. so I love, if you want to see a bit of Kriti, go watch the video. But so recently I've been exploring and obviously Sadorini is, is amazing mm -hmm. and deserves every bit of, love that it gets it's sure. stunning and this year i went to um milos mm -hmm. island for the first time and which is where you are currently and i think i was standing right there <laughs> and um i absolutely loved it i absolutely yeah. loved it the beaches i mean the beaches blew my mind Sarajiniko, um what were yeah. some of the other I don't remember their names, but I just felt like I was there's on another Fidi planet. There's Plaka, there's um, right. Tigrado. So my the, my followers, my listeners know that I when I'm I don't like picking a favorite island, but when push comes to stuff and they say you have to give me one, I say Milos. You know, yeah. I would say Milos after Crete. Yeah, fair. Perfect. I'm not gonna. I'm but not, I haven't yeah, I haven't fully experienced. I'm truly like just starting now to really fully experience Greece. Like I spent yeah. a lot of time now in Athens with work. Where else have I been? Oh, I've been to Paros. I've been to Naxos. My brother actually got married there. Um, all beautiful. Yeah. You know, um, but Milos does have something extra special about it. Yeah, like, it really does. It's, I'll it's definitely so be back. Unique. Yeah, I'll it's, be back. It's such a unique island. It's like adventure, yeah. it's small, it's beautiful, obviously. Yes. Um, what part of Crete? Did you already tell me that? What part of Crete are you from? So I'm from uh, Hanya. Okay. And My little favorite town part of Crete. Pallohora. Yeah. I mean, it's My amazing. favorite part of Crete. Pallohora, right on the coast. It's like a little peninsula of paradise. Okay. The yeah. only thing, I mean, it's not really a complaint. It's like all the part, the big beaches are like an hour apart, but that's like the last yeah. thing I'll ever complain about. Yeah. It's like well, even, why... even 40 minute drives in Greece go by quick because like it's beautiful. And you know, you have a nice view, but that's why I yeah. love Pallohora. Like I just stick there because they have so, so many beaches just walking distance okay. where each one is different. Yeah. Um, yeah. When I went to Kenya, we stayed in the Venetian port, which was uh, unreal. I so love unreal. the Venetian port. It, I just yeah. feel so like grand when i walked through yeah. like, this is just beautiful you know yeah, yeah exactly i love I, it i remember we, i ate at this restaurant that when i was on the boat in a cabin the guy sleeping next to me recommended i go to this restaurant i go he's like whatever you do give me like a long list when this is my first time going a long time ago and uh the halkina have you have you gone there i haven't they had like live performance and it was such a vibe oh my gosh it, it was lit. just like traditional <laughs> music and the food was obviously unreal. It was an experience of a lifetime for sure. Yeah, Glendia and Kriti, like the Panigiria and Kriti are on another level. Like if you haven't yeah. been, you have to go. Definitely. Have to go. 
All right, what all about that. some what about some Greek foods? And don't tell me just the Cretan dishes. <laughs> um, I love Greek food. I love Greek foods. I love cooking. Um, Spanakopita. I really lean more towards the vegetarian vibes. You know, people are like, I don't eat lamb. And I know that that's a sin, especially to yeah. people who meet me like, but you're Greek. Like, yeah, you have right. to eat lamb. Like, there's I'm not more the biggest lamb person food. either. There's yeah. more. Um, but Spanakopita, Kalitsunya, the Cretan ones. Um, I love Kolotifetefteves, the zucchini fritters. I'm yep. obsessed. I can eat them every, I, I order them everywhere I go. I don't care where I am. I just need to eat yeah. every, every, every taverna. Um, I love moussaka. What else? Pretty much everything, except for the meat, the like gamey stuff. I can't do Actually, it. All right, so you're flying out to Crete. You have one night. You're sitting by the Venetian port. What are you eating? I'm eating yemista, kolokifakeftedes, koryatiki salata. Honestly, I would be good with that. That's That sounds perfect. That's just like... Now, being from Crete, when you get a gyro, do you get with yogurt or tzatziki? I do get it with yogurt. And, you know, I didn't know that it was a Cretan thing because yeah. obviously that's when I've gone to Greece. That's yeah. like the only place I would, I've been to for many years. And I was actually at King Sublaji in Astoria in New York yep. for the first time um, a, a few years ago. And I was like, yeah, and um, can I have it with yogurti? And he was like, are you from Crete? And I was yeah. like, yeah. He was like, we don't have yogurt here. He was like, but all the Cretans always ask for it. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And in Northern Greece, they use sauce or ketchup and mustard. If you like, yes. from like Katerini area, it's ketchup and mustard. The Saloniki too, right? Yeah. Did yeah. Yeah. That? If you're up in the North, it's either ketchup, mustard or sauce, which is like a mix of that with like one more ingredient. I don't know yeah. exactly what's in sauce, but it's, it's like a ketchup. -y mustard. Honestly, yeah. I liked it when I had it. I do. I, was like, this I is do. Pretty good. I know anytime I post a picture, I get a lot of backlash with that, but I actually like it. It's really tasty. It's, it's really, you know, if it yeah. tastes good and, and we love tzatziki too, you know, it's a yeah. classic. Yeah, it's, just because tzatziki. I like that doesn't mean I don't like tzatziki. I like both. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Listen, <laughs> I'm with you. Awesome. <laughs> uh, all right. I, I want to go back to music a little bit. Um, okay. What are some of your proudest moments to date? Oh, that's such a nice question. Um, well, one was definitely signing my record deal. Um, I'm signed out of Sony, Germany, and it's a global deal. So Panic Records represents me in Greece because they're Sony affiliated, Sony affiliated and I have people in the different territories. But I flew to Berlin, February 2020, just you know, a few days before the world shut down. But I remember just sitting there um, and we were with Buzuki in hand and I gave everybody um, uh, Matya, like the little evil eyes. Yeah. And, you know, we, we were sitting in this big office playing my music to the CEO of the company. And, you know, I'm singing Bamet Bamet. And we played the music video that I actually yeah. shot before I even got my record deal. I just wanted to make it and I did it and it ended up helping me get it. Um, but yeah, that was just a really big moment, like sitting there and being like, wow, I'm being hurt. And it's like music that's truly me. Like that's mm -hmm. my home. Like, yeah, it was really, really awesome. Um, and then I think another moment was playing it for my family. Like, when I was in Kriti this past summer and seeing them again and like playing them all the unreleased music that's coming and just seeing how excited they were and just happy for me. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, proud with me incorporating my Greek roots. So uh -huh. yeah, just their faces felt really good to see. Awesome. Um, what would you tell someone who's just Someone who just decided to do what you did, change, change their life, decided I'm going to go into this music world. What do you, one tip you can give this person on day one? One tip is network, 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 meet as many people as you can and keep going 
and know that it's a long game. It's a marathon. It is not a sprint. So however that means you can connect with people, whether it's social media or going out to shows, um, whatever you can do, mm-hmm. just keep singing, keep writing, and keep talking to people. Perfect. Uh, no, I, I like that answer because... Yeah, networking is super powerful for those listening. Everything. If you have the opportunity to be at anywhere networking, just jump on that. Just do um, it. You never know. Yeah, you never know. Because, and don't approach, I always tell people, don't approach networking strictly for what can this person do for me? Networking yeah. as make friends. And then if you can help each other, that's the bonus part. Yeah, sometimes it comes down the line. Somebody you meet, right. like four years ago, it's like, oh, this one person I met, this opportunity might be good for them. And they send exactly. you an email and you're like, wow, that's yeah. great. And you also just meet cool people. So for why sure. not? What, you, what, is, what do you enjoy the most about all this? For me, I think it's the process Wow, I love so many aspects of it, which is lucky um, because there are so many aspects to being an artist, right? Like you're not just in the studio making music, you also are front facing and talking to people. And I love doing things like this, connecting with you and and people who hear the music. Um, But what I do love the most, if I had to choose, is the process of creating a song with people I love. Like, it's just magical. Like something that didn't exist, you know, a few hours before, now all of a sudden you've all agreed and come together in synergy of like, and like, this is gonna be great, you know? And it takes so much time to get a song to the point where it's ready to be released. But that first core, you know, writing session where you have the lyrics, you have the melody, maybe it's just on guitar, um it's just really amazing and then working to get it to where it becomes it's it's so cool seeing where something starts and and where it ends up for sure so i always like when i'm observing people in their work i notice that a lot of everyone handles mistakes differently and sometimes a mistake can take someone completely off the rails um how do you how do you handle mistakes we all make mistakes we learn from them, but what is some advice you would give someone who struggles in this area? Well, I think I would say kind of what you just said of we all make mistakes and we learn from them. And that's the most you can ask for. I know I honestly can't even remember what I was upset about once, um, but I read this book and this quote has stuck with me ever since where it said, rolling in the muck is not the best way to get clean. And that really stuck with me because I am the type of person who, if I hurt somebody's feelings and I feel like it's my fault, like I will hurt myself a thousand times more mentally, you know, and I just can't handle it. It doesn't feel good. But, um, or if I make a mistake, uh, I'm, my tendency is to really mull over it and just repeat it and be like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. shouldn't have done that. But this quote is something I think about where it's just like, wait a second, If I need to feel better, if I want to feel better and be better tomorrow, I can't keep beating myself up because then I'm just going to be down the whole time. So it's just like thinking positively and being like, what can I learn from that? Learn from it and just be better tomorrow. Perfect. All right. I got just a couple more questions and I'll let you go. Um, Obviously to get where you're going, to go where you have gone so far takes tremendous, tremendous work ethic. Uh, I want to know what inspires that work ethic. I know I've, I've asked you who inspires you and what has inspired you, but what inspires you to get up every day and grind? Honestly, I think about my yaya. And uh, she, um, obviously I was named after her. And we had such a close, close bond where every summer, you know, I lived with her and she was the hardest working woman I know. She was widowed in her 40, early 40s and she basically built a farm by herself and ran it by herself as a woman in a time and place where that was just not common and always stood her ground and always just achieved things that were so incredible. And she was always up at the crack of dawn just doing everything. And she always would tell me like, if a yeah, like you have to always work hard, 
no matter what. Um, and I really do like wake up and think about her and think about making her proud in what I do. Hmm. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, wouldn't just, yeah, yeah, would not be lazy. You know, she tended to the farm and made beautiful olive oil. But if she was making music, she would be up like practicing and doing the thing, you know, <laughs> like sure, make yeah, sure. yeah, proud really is what I think about. That's the motto, make yeah, proud. I like that. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, what does Greek, what does being Greek mean to you? Oh, that's a loaded question. Um, to me, being Greek, it's so hard to, I don't know why, but and I don't know if you feel this way, but I feel like people from Greece, we just have a different love for our country than some people from other places. <laughs> like, yeah, for sure. I just feel like a Greek person meets another Greek person in your family. Or like, oh, we talk about the home country with so much longing and so much yeah. beauty. And it's this energy. Like when I think about Greece, I just feel an energy to it even when I'm and when I'm in Greece there's just this energy and this appreciation for the depth and the history that's there and just the love that we have for the culture and the traditions and the dancing like I you know I started Cretan dancing at I think three or four years old but everybody who saw me would always say like, she's reincarnated because nobody danced like that, let's say like yeah. at four years old. Like I've always just felt this energy in mm -hmm. me. Um, and I don't know if that fully answers the question because it's a hard question. No, <laughs> but I, I mean, I, I know where you're going with it. So it's, it's good. It's good you answer. know, it's just yeah. like, I don't know. It's just like, it's just love. It's like mm -hmm. love for the, for the traditions and the culture and pride for where we come from yeah like no, I, I always I'm tell people so something proud. i always usually tell something similar where like you can walk into a place in greece for instance that you don't know the person behind the counter but you instantly connect to them they they talk yeah. to you like you're one of them and i just i just love that about being greek yeah like when i meet a greek like literally the other day i was at i was here in hollywood at the farmer's market and there was this guy there selling um spanakopita and fasolada and i was like mm -hmm. Yes, I said you can. He was like, Yeah. And I was like, Oh, where are you from? And we just had yeah. this great connection. And I felt so good supporting him. And um yeah, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. And just the culture and the history. Like I always say, my, my favorite word is the word meraki. Because mm -hmm. you know, beautiful it's word. it's such a beautiful word, you know, it means to put so much love and soul and passion into what you do that you leave a part of yourself with your work. And I think thinking about that with like Greece and our and our history that we got that word and that feeling um mm -hmm. I don't know just makes me proud and that that's something that I also think about and something my yeah always told me about whatever you do do it with my ID so perfect perfect way to put a wrap on this uh so how can we all follow you online give us like the links the socials let, yes, let's yes. let our listeners hear it thank you um my instagram handle is at evangelia e-v-a-n-g-e-l-i-a and uh tiktok is at evangelia music and twitter which i don't use much but if you are on twitter <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> at evangelia underscore music and youtube is just evangelia you type it in you'll see all the songs perfect um all right i guess it, that's pretty much it i'm gonna squeeze one last question in okay. what what would you no that's not what i meant to say <laughs> what what i meant to say was Hold on a second. I just I just lost my train of thought. No worries. I'm gonna cut. I'll, I'll cut and fix this. Yeah, actually, yeah. You know no, what? I'm, I'm actually gonna just leave it raw. I don't think it's that that big of a deal. Um, what is one thing that you want your fans to know about you that they may not know? Ooh, oh, hit me with a. That's one thing. Well, maybe that I'm just like them. I love music too, and I'm a fan. And 
it means so, so much to me when people reach out that they love something and, and compliment something that I, that I create. And I really, really, really deeply value the time that it took to engage with anything that I do, whether even if it's just a social media post or watching a video. Um, but yeah, I get so excited when somebody sends me a message and you know I'll respond and they're like, oh my God, thank you for responding. I'm like, no, thank you yeah. for reaching out and literally making my day. It's the coolest thing for me mm -hmm. to have fans and people who respect and appreciate the work that I do. And I don't take it for granted. And I just really, really, really appreciate them. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming on. This has been a pleasure. Uh, Ladies and gents, this is Evangelia. She is the hopeful Eurovision yeah. contestant Fingers for 2022. Crossed. And like she said, you can find her at on Instagram at Evangelia, on TikTok at Evangelia Music, and Twitter. We said at Evangelia Music. Underscore music, yeah. Underscore music. Yeah. And is there a website? There's a website, evangeliamusic.com. Perfect. Thank you again for coming on and we'll Thank talk you to you soon. Thank you for having me. It was so much fun. Thanks everyone for listening to Grease Chats and we'll talk to you in the next episode.